Empty the chamber on them. And how do you do that? Four six seconds, point eight, point feet, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to the Scoop World Order, the bank edition. One of my favorite ones. Uh, we are going to start doing a weekly recruiting roundup on some of the biggest targets for Ohio State. Uh, we're going to play some of their highlights. We're going to talk about some of the intel that Bill the Bank Green has. Uh, really excited about this. This is going to be a weekly thing in season for us, and this is going to be a can't miss episode. With that being said, as always, we are thankful and grateful for you guys. Our YouTube just hit a new all-time high for subscribers. Thanks to you guys. You guys are spreading the word. Thank you for liking the content. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Uh, we really try to put out a good product, so thank you guys so much. Uh, BuckeyeScoop.com, we are growing as well. So if you know an Ohio State fan, you are an Ohio State fan, you need a good gift, Subscribe to BuckeyeScoop.com. We will not let you down. We are growing like crazy, and people are loving it. So I appreciate you guys, as always. In this video, comment which of the superstars that are still out there in the 2023 class do you want to see us land? There are some big names out there. This is probably the biggest recruiting weekend we've ever had uh, for an opener with Notre Dame in town. It's going to be a huge weekend, so give me some names. Is it Mateo? Is it Keon? There's some big-time DNs coming in. Let me know in the comments. Appreciate you guys as always. With that being said, I'm bringing in my man with the healthy back, Bill the Bank Green. Bank, how are you today? Doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm just excited because, uh, you know, me and you, we talked about my boy Malachi Tony. He is blowing up as of today. He yeah. got Texas A&M. He got Florida. He got Miami. Uh, he, he had a great catch in that uh, national showcase game down in South Florida. Uh, I know that you're, you've are you got a big update on the scoop about some of your South Florida kids. Um, run through some of the guys. You know, obviously, we've got South Florida Express guys are, are balling out. Uh, Brandon is fantastic. Uh, our boy Hugh Fletcher was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about uh, some of the intel you got from your South Florida Express guys. Yeah, just, you know, really from a recruiting standpoint, you know, there's a lot of bluster on the Internet about, Tate possibly flipping to Tennessee, uh, Brandon Ennis in contact with Miami, and maybe something could happen there, a visit maybe. And I'm being told no on both. And, you know, we take this with a grain of salt because what we're talking about with these updates, we're talking about a late August update. So if something happens in mid-November, <laughs> I don't want to be held to it. For today, there's nothing going on there at all. Uh, yeah. Same with Mark Fletcher, you know, Miami wants them. I mean, Miami, you know, they ha have already talked to the South Florida Express coaches and they're telling them I need running backs and I need wide receivers. So they're going to target those kids all the way up to, you know, time they put pen on paper or fax through the mail. But so right now there's nothing going on. I don't see any worries at all right now with Mark Fletcher, Brandon Ennis or Carnell Tate. So I think things are really good there. I think um, J.J. Smith, you know, there's a lot of talk about J.J., and he's only only a junior, so there's some time here mm -hmm. with J.J., but he's going to be, you know, probably, my guys say he's going to be the best of the group of all the SFE wow. guys, maybe maybe the best SFE guy ever. And, you know, they've had Amari Cooper and a bunch of those guys. So they are just, you know, and they usually hold back. You know, they they don't uh -huh. overinflate evaluations like some people do they tend to under and you know under evaluate their guys but they've just they just think jj has gotten so much faster and that body is being bigger you know so that's a good thing there to see that jojo trader you know is probably going to be a guy that he go he may go all the way to signing day next year till he makes his decision or till he makes his final decision so but but you know the fact that if you can get JJ and Brandon Ennis and Tate, get those guys in the fold. You know, it makes it so much easier for Jojo, you know, to come with his boys and play. They also think that he's a corner. They don't think he's a wide out, although they think he's a good wide out, but a great cornerback. So some in interesting things going on there. Heartline is doing the recruiting and doing a great job as he always does, but that's just some, a little bit of stuff going on there right now. Ohio State is also interested in Winston Watkins, a relative of Sammy Watkins. Winston plays 
Um, wide receiver at IMG. He's a roommate of Carnell Tate's. They're they're tight. So Ohio State, you know, they saw him in camp, and you, uh, I was there watching that one, and I knew that guy was getting offered as soon as camp was over, and he did. So Winston, Winston can play. So that's kind of a rundown on the, uh, you know, South Florida Express guys right now. They got a lot of talent, as you can see. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's no high school, you know, in, in, anywhere in America has that kind. So when you talk about South Florida Express, I mean, you just go on and on and on and on because that's just the kind of roster they have. Well, yeah, and their their quarterback at the 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 OT seven in Vegas was Malachi Nelson, who. Uh, American Heritage just beat in a great game on Saturday. I mean, it was the it was funny. There were college football games on, but after that Northwestern game was over, I was watching American Heritage because I wanted to see Hugh Fletcher, Brandon yeah. Ennis. Uh, we actually we have some highlights from that that we're gonna we're gonna dial up literally right now. So I uh, that's the the beautiful thing about watching those guys is it's like watching college football. So this is this is American Heritage. Uh, they were playing. Um, Team out of California with Malachi Nelson, who's the number one player in the country, is committed to USC. Uh, allegedly, Texas A&M offered him fifteen million dollars, which yes. will be interesting if he flips, because you know I don't think that'll help Dylan Rayola's price tag if he has one. I don't think he does because of Dominic, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like I mean, Different these top, situation. yeah, if, if a yeah, exactly. With your dad being an NFL millionaire, you're not really as yeah. likely to take the NIL Different money and in- yeah. Exactly. You're about you're about development as a player. Uh, you know, a lot like we talked about with Mateo, who's he's on this reel as well. But yeah. you know, Brandon Brandon Innes is a maybe my favorite player in the entire class. I think he is. He's a nasty kid. He's super fluid. Um, again, great over the shoulder. We get to look at through the guy's armpit um, from from Heritage. But this is my favorite clip. I love this clip because you know it, it's funny because uh, your your boy Ricky always calls him his H back. And they literally line up as a tight end here. So he actually is right, playing. Right. He actually is playing tight end here. And watch this block by Brandon Innes. Like this kid is, you know, for being the number one receiver in the country, he is not scared to put his nose in there. Oh and, no, he's and, a bad dude. He's a bad dude. Brandon's a bad guy. He plays wide receiver with sort of a linebacker mentality. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's because these wideouts, and you know, they can be kind of divish sometimes. Oh God, there's no yeah, diva. They- no Deben Brandon is. Brandon's a linebacker, you know, playing wide receiver. So if you're kind of a diva <laughs> DB, you, you have no chance to cover him. You have no chance. He's too physical. The routes are too precise. He's going to fight for every 50-50 ball, and he's going to win those. I mean, so, yeah, I agree with you. I love Brandon, too. He plays so hard. He wants to win so bad. And sometimes you question these wideouts if they're a little bit on the, you know, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, you know what they are. They have oh. reputations, you know, yeah. for just being so soft sometimes. They want to run oh. run routes. They want to run by. Brandon will go over the middle and look forward to the contact and deliver the blow after he makes the catch. Yeah, and, and when Ricky and the South Florida Express guys compare him to, like, Anquan Bolden, who was a really right. bad dude, right. and Jarvis Landry, a guy that would crack a linebacker and – laugh at him or Santonio yeah like like Santonio would love that kind of stuff and honestly you know who he reminds me of and you're gonna laugh at this but he's like a super version of Brian Hartline in terms of how tough he is and how physical he is and Brian would run down on kick you know Brian never had this this type of size you know Brandon oh yeah it's amazing that he's as fluid as he is because he's so jacked up yeah but and he's also fat. Ricky Nim told me he's faster this year than he has been. He yeah, has gotten he's gotten faster. He's not just a possession guy anymore. He can go over the top. Yeah. Well, we're gonna switch it up, and we're gonna put my boy Malachi Tony on, who's blowing up today. He's got A and M. He got Florida. I'm sure Ohio State will probably offer by the time this is posted. But uh, this kid is 14. Uh, right. You know, he, he and the thing that's interesting about him is there's a lot of these kids that are Ohio State guys that are wearing Ohio State's logo on the back of their helmets. I've never seen that before. Like, literally, right. he's one. Ennis is oh, one. Yeah. Fletcher's one. Uh, uh, J.J. Smith is one. And he's not on American Heritage, but the other guys are. And this kid is a 14-year-old phenom freshman who he had a touchdown um, in the big ESPN Showcase game, and he did a great interview where he literally said, the guy's not as good as me, so I checked it to a fade, and I made a great play, and I was, I was dying laughing. I was like, you put the microphone on a, in front of a 14-year-old on ESPN, and who knows what he's going to say, but 
he is made for the camera, baby. So uh, tell us a little bit about Malachi Tony. Uh, your guy is obviously he's on South Florida Express. He went to Vegas as an eighth grader. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about about what that means to take a kid like that, that young to a tournament, the biggest tournament maybe in the entire country for seven on seven. Yeah, a lot of these seven on seven deals, South Florida Express enters. They know they're going to win. They're going to crush everybody. No one's going to really battle with them. So they let a lot of their young guys, they have a 15U team, 15 under team. They let those guys, you know, get their tape, get their feet wet in some big time action. But when you go to Vegas, you're limited. You can't take the whole squad there. So you can yeah. only take contributors there. And on a team with Ennis Tate, JJ Smith, and JoJo Trader, they took. <laughs> Malachi Tony, and he contributed, you know, so there's no, there's no gifts in the Vegas tournament. You can only take guys that you know are going to help you, and Malachi is one of them, and it's showing in high school football this year. You know, these are not cream puff games he's playing in. These are big-time games. So, uh, this, you know, Heritage yeah, plays, you know, they play a great schedule, and um, he's blowing up. Now, he is small, and he's got to mature, and he's got to get better. Um mm-hmm. He loves Ohio State. Now, I could see him being offered this. It won't shock me if Ohio State offers him this weekend. Uh, yeah. You know, he's coming up. He's coming up to Ohio State on his dime, you know, to, to see the game. And yep. he's going to be be with Brandon Ennis, his, his boy. So, yep. it won't shock me at all if he has an Ohio State offer before he shows up or during or soon after. I mean, I, I think he's the kind of guy that Ohio State – would offer. I think you almost need to offer him now, not yeah. fall behind the other schools. You know, there's nothing binding in that. If he ends up not being what you think he <clears throat> should be, then you don't honor it. But yeah. he may end up being what they think he needs to be. He's playing a lot of outside in these clips where you think he would be strictly a slot guy. Yeah. So and, you know, and, and hope he's and this, learning from Brandon, you know. Yeah, and this is yeah, and this is a game they drove five hours to play a really good team in Georgia, you know, and then they you know, they played one of the top teams in the country from California. I mean, so these guys play big time ball, and and again, this is this is like the game is 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 still going on. This isn't like you know they're up thirty five nothing. I mean, he's lining up next to Brandon Innes when he's out there, so it's you know they got two receivers out there. It's him and Brandon, so it's yeah, you know, he's yeah. a different different cat, and uh, super excited about him. I got a. My next guy is a guy that I love and you laugh about how much I love him, but Jelani Thurman uh, oh, might God. be the best tight end in the country. Just an absolute yeah. monster. Uh, you laugh about a tight end coming to Ohio State Bank and for much, well, for I very good wonder, reason. You know, I mean, he might be a guy that he forces you. Look at that. He, he forces you to throw him the football. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's good stuff. That's Kyle Pitts stuff there. This yeah. is not Nick Vanette, Nick Vanette or, you know, that type of tight end at all. Yeah. This is a this is a guy we haven't seen since maybe Ricky Dudley at Ohio State. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. You know, you're probably not lining him up in line and asking him to knock Will Anderson on the ground, but he can go get the ball. I think he's a guy that almost forces you to throw it to him. Oh, I I, I totally agree. I mean, and he wants the ball here. He's playing defensive end. Uh, yeah, he's got a nasty attitude. Yeah. He's a guy that plays he's hard. A great athlete. Yeah. Play, he's willing to play both ways. It shows he'll do some of the dirty work. Um, I got a couple more clips, so let me fast forward. Here he is again, coming across the formation. Uh, again, you know, a guy that comfortable catching the ball. You know, his dad was a all pro type guy for. You think he's got nice little attitude points at the guy, which I don't know if Ryan Day would love that, but you know, I I love this kid. I you know I, I know we lost Ty Lockwood, but you would well, you I take this kid play. over Ty Lockwood, Bank? Oh, yeah. Ty Lockwood is Nick Vanette, which is a great player. Yeah. I love Nick Vanette. I'd love to have yeah. him, but Nick Vanette doesn't do these things. Yeah. Like, and, like, like, you know what I mean? This guy doesn't do the things Nick Vanette can do is just line up in line and knock people around. This is not that kind of guy. He may yeah. be when he fills out. I mean, he's nowhere near what he's going to be. You know, after yeah. six months at Ohio State, you won't recognize this body. To me, yeah. it's Kyle, it, Pitts. Kyle Pitts. So he oh, is. I, I, I agree, man. He, he was getting a flag for celebrating. I'm just like, you know, this guy, I mean, he, he's got an attitude, man, and he loves to play and he loves to catch the ball and, and go deep. And again, I think he's a, he's a, he's a spark plug, man. He loves, he loves, he has the attitude and he wants it. And, and I mean, I love tight ends that want the ball and, you know, they, they've got a little bit of an edge to them. And, you know, here he is just cold cocking a guy on the wedge. So yeah. 
if you guys can't see him, here he is. You know, I mean, you can tell what guy's the Ohio State guy because he's right there. And you watch him, you know, his kids run down on kickoff and boom, <laughs> right yeah. on his butt. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I love the kid. Receiver, most wide receivers or pass catchers don't want to do this. They don't want to no. be out there on the kickoff. They don't want to hit anyone. They run, they'd like to run the ball back. They don't want to hit anyone. But he's a yeah. special dude. I love Jelani Thurman. I think he's special. If you tell me he's the best player in the class, I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. He's, he's, yeah. He's he's got that nastiness. That, like, more, that, for me, him or Justin Moore, those are the dudes in this class. Yeah. And, and like a guy like him and Brandon, like they got that nastiness that I just love oh, to yeah. watch on film. Uh, so this is a guy, obviously, this is going to be a work in progress. Austin Sireveld, Lakota East, guard. You know, we know he can do this. I mean, he, yeah. he buries a, a kid from Centerville. Um, nasty dude. You know, but again, can he move his feet in pass block? There's not. You asked me when I got his clips, I was like, I, anything pass blocking? I was like, I don't think so. They run the triple. Yeah. So they might pass three times this century. So, you know, but he's a he's a big, tough, physical kid. And you know, he's oh, folding yeah. the folding dudes back and you know you can only do you know what you're gonna do against these guys here he's playing tackle it kind of moves all over the place so he plays some tackle plays guard uh so it's kind of interesting how they you know i don't know if they if they flip strong quick here he's playing defense uh you know gets to the quarterback so you know uh, him playing defense shows that he's got some athleticism here he closes down on a on a on a give read uh gets the running back on the ground and he's a kicker which is hilarious it's probably oh, the best I part didn't... of the the, oh, he, he kicks it deep, man. And it's like, hell, Ohio State can't kick it out of the end zone. So he might do that his first year. Wow. <laughs> and, he, and he's a punter. Look at him. That's crazy. I... Uh, so I mean, he's got to be some kind of athlete because they never asked me to punt or kick at Perry. So, yeah, but I, uh, yeah, again, he's got to learn how to pass block. And, but, you know, he sure. seems like a tough kid and reminds me of Jack. And here's uh, Josh Padilla, another kid playing right tackle for, for them. And, you know, he passed blocks here. Now, again, is, is that, you know, Jason Moore, or is it, you know, a big time DN? No, but you know, he's, you know, he's, he's crushing guys and putting guys on the ground and he really runs well down the field, which is a good sign that he's, he's somewhat of an athlete here. He, he reaches the team and, you know, these guys are playing decent competition. So, I mean, it's Ohio ball and he's finishing guys. So, you know, again, is it, is it what we need in a franchise left tackle? Probably not, but you know, the kid, he shows, they both show a very nasty disposition, which I love. And, uh, you know, the athleticism is just something that, you know, I, I think if a kid's willing to work, he can learn all the pass block. Cause I personally, I never pass blocked in high school because I was a tight end. So, right. I mean, you yeah, know, I, I, think, I, but, I think PD is a center for Ohio State. So, yeah. you know, he's not going to be blocking Jason Moore or, yeah. you know, Uyagle, those kind of guys. He's not blocking Will Anderson, you know, but yeah, yeah. You know, we, we've seen, I've seen him in person before and, you know, I like him. He's got to get better than what he is. And, and all these guys do. But, oh yeah, you know so they did good roping the in-state guys. You know with Sireville, yeah. you know Luke Montgomery, who we both like. Yeah, Padilla. So, you know that's a good building block to start for Fry. Oh, I I totally agree. I think that uh, you know if if by some miracle they could get in on Samson, that'd be great. Uh, I don't think it's yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. I don't think you think it's gonna happen, think. but you know it's just one of those things where if it if it happens, it'd be great. But, you know, I think you have to hit the portal. You're, you're going to have to try to find another tackle. Uh, I think that you'd be fine if you played Dom Jackson at uh, at left tackle next year and then have an open audition for about eight different guys at right tackle. I think you could make it work. Play, start Fryer. You know, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I think Josh Fryer is a guy that could start. I think that Enoch's a guy that could start. Um, you know, but it'll be interesting to see what they do. All right, so this is Kay and Lee out of Georgia. Um Super, this is he's only got two clips up, but real physical kid. He's down here, he's got the little arm sleeves on. Uh, but on the jam, just takes this guy's soul, which is great, drives him off the screen. <laughs> like, I, I love stuff like that because you know, this kid, he's a fluid guy, and, and here he is. You know, he's adjusting. You know, they go in motion, they're obviously in zone because he doesn't run with them. So, you know, but watch the fit in the run game bank from number four. This is great. He comes up, man, and he is just not scared. Boom. It's a big back, too. That was a big back. Oh, yeah. This is Georgia football, man. These are yeah, – that, that guy is not – 200-pound <laughs> back. It's not a little scat back. Yeah, and he knocks sure. them backwards. So, you know, I, I love seeing this. I know you like Kay and Lee. I, I think our DBs are really coming along nice. I mean, you know, Malik had the huge hit week one. Um, I think that our 
our DB class has shaped up. Jermaine really has done well. You know, Calvin Simpson Hunt. That was a guy that I had a clip of him. I didn't get it uploaded. I'll get him up next week. But uh, you know, what do you think of the DB class so far, Bank? I like it. I liked it better when Dijon, when Didi was part of the class. I liked it a lot better. It oh, looked yeah. like so it is what it is. You know, it's a good group. It's a really good group. Seth Hawkins, another SFB guy, is a good player. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I wish, Dijon, I wish Dijon was in that class. I wish, you know, another corner, another big time corner. And Dijon is a big time corner. Big oh, time. Yeah. So I wish he yeah. was there. But even without him, I mean, this is there's a lot of really good players here. And they needed a, a DB Hall in this class. They needed, they needed quality, obviously, but you needed quantity. They needed guys. And, they, and they've roped a bunch of them in that I think can be productive players. And they're, they're not done yet. You know what I mean? They're still – got a long way to go to December. Yeah, is, so, is, but Dijon would be the crown jewel if they could rope him oh back man. in. Yeah, when, when, when the SFB guys tell me Dijon's a better football player than Carmani McLean, that gets my attention. <laughs> is, he, uh, is he gone? You think it's, the door's shut by Ryan oh, on that no. one? Well, Carmani's definitely gone. Um, well, like no, said, I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean Dijon. Dijon, nobody knows what's going on there. And, and if God. I were to say something right now, it would be a coin flip, just throwing something off the top of my head. Nobody knows right now. He was supposed to commit to Florida within three or four days of decommitting from Ohio State. He was supposed to commit at Friday Night Lights for Florida. Then it was supposed to be a couple of days later. Then now nobody knows. Miami's taking a real shot at him, a run. He has not committed anywhere since decommitting from Ohio State. And I had written before that I thought he was coming back into the class. Um, and everything was set up for him to come back in the class. Alford kind of laid the groundwork. The NIL stuff was covered. There was a Sunday night Zoom call with Ryan Day that Ryan Day didn't like what he heard. There's a lot of hands in the pie there, too. So, yeah. you know, I think had Ryan Day said, look, we love you. We need you. Come on back. I think I think he'd be in the class today. But I don't think Ryan Day was comfortable with yeah. that Zoom call. So yeah. now, can they revisit that three months from now when things are settled? I don't know. You know, I know he's uncommitted right now. And he was supposed to commit to Florida a long time ago, weeks ago. Hasn't happened mm -hmm. yet. So, you know, we'll see what happens with Dijon. I mean, he can play, though. He's a player. Yeah, I, I always worry. I, I think that some of these kids are crazy when they're not committed their senior year just because, you know, every Friday you go out, I mean, you risk an ACL, yeah. you risk a knee. Uh, at least if you're committed to a, a school like Ohio State, if you have some sort of debilitating injury, you're, you saw they'll honor your scholarship, uh, they'll rehab you, you know, they'll get you on a yeah. plan to get right. Uh, you know, when you're out there, it's kind of like not having insurance and you're driving your car and all of a sudden you get in a wreck and you get sued for a zillion dollars. Like it's, it's a really bad deal so yeah uh, kind of kind of surprising and, and uh, i know it's never going to change some people that are going to go up to signing day and do that but i always feel like when there's a rash of commitments leading up to week one of high school it's kind of like that insurance policy where it's like okay i'm committed to ohio state committed to oklahoma you know usc bama uh just so that i have that peace of mind that if something happens i still have my scholarship and i'm good because yeah. you know, most schools will honor that just because you know if, if it's something debilitating they can medical you and doesn't count towards the scholarship cap. So it is what it is. I am going to go to the guy that I think is the number one player in the class. And I might be the only guy in the world that thinks that, but Mateo, Uangalele, these guys played Allen park, uh, down in Texas. Uh, their stadium seats about 50,000 people. It looks like an NFL stadium and it is gorgeous. And this guy is just a freak yeah, of nature athlete. That's <laughs> nice. Six, six, two sixty, 260. And, runs like he's you know brandon ennis or i mean this looks like brandon in a super size version of catching this ball um wow. yeah he's he's a freakazoid uh anything new on mateo obviously i don't think he's gonna make it in for this game it's kind of no. a coin flip right now but i uh, think he's a signing day signing day deal yeah um i think ohio state is definitely in it and yeah. there's a connection between mateo his father big dave and larry johnson and I think they were very comfortable at Ohio State. I think they could be, you know, Ohio State could definitely be the ticket here for them. Um, we'll see. Uh, USC kind of concerns me. I keep hearing things about 
how much this kid loves music and he's looking yeah. for a music career when football's over and you know usc will bring in heavy hitters to talk to him about how they can set him up in his music life so i worry yeah. about that i don't think he's going to make a decision before signing day i mean i think he's going to go right to the end oregon supposedly well in this one as well so there's some moving parts here um you know could nil factor in here you know i'm sure big dave mm -hmm. thought dj would be a millionaire multi-millionaire by now and that doesn't seem like it's working out right now so does you know mateo go to the best nil package to lock in money for himself i don't know yeah you know i'm just kind of thinking out loud here um we'll see i mean you watch this film jack sawyer and jt to they don't do this no they don't they, they're, they're darn good defensive ends this kid could uh, be a tight end i definitely could be a power five tight end but i think his i think his futures on the d line just wreaking yeah. havoc yeah yeah he's this uh here. this is so athletic it's it's sick <laughs> he's a different cat man i i think uh like something you said that was profound is, you know, when you talked about DJ and the lack of development, you know, cause he was the guy that got a big NIL deal from Dr. Pepper to start the season last year, preseason right. Heis Heisman right. favorite. Um, and the wheels just kind of fell off last year. And I, I hope he balances back cause he seems like a great kid. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. Mateo seems like a great kid, but you know, I mean, he's lost weight. He's in better shape, but again, like the development thing, it's kind of like with, you know, Dylan Rayola, you know, you could go be, you know, penny wise, dollar foolish and, and go somewhere where he gets, you know, 5 million bucks or 2 million. It's a lot. That's a ton of money, but yeah, you know, sure. the way, the, the way DNs are getting paid and quarterbacks are getting paid. It's like, if you go to the place that develops you to Nick Bosa, who's making 160 million on his next deal. Or if you're a quarterback and you're making 75 million a year, like Joe Burrow, well, I mean, it's that 5 million ain't going to seem like much if you don't get developed and turned into yeah. an NFL guy, you know? Um, but I mean, th this guy can go, this guy can go to Akron and he's going to end up being a first round pick. I mean, you, yeah, you, he's, up here you can't coach. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, he, and he's, he's polished, man. Cause his, yeah. uh, big, they've got the front, which is big Dave's group. Uh, the last one I got is Brocklin, the quarterback. I'm just gonna let this run. Yeah. This is, uh, this is a scrimmage. Cause you know, it's funny. The O line's wearing blue and he's wearing white. So they, he's non-contact, but That's you know, so, so throw some nice, uh, nice balls. You know, he's kind of a, you know, what are your thoughts on Brock line? It's kind of a weird situation because I don't think anybody expects anything out of them with, with, you know, Kyle McCord likely starting next year or, or uh, Devin Brown starting next year. And then you have Dylan coming behind him. Yeah. Uh, what it's like, what do you make of, of Brock Glenn? He's a kid that committed. Uh, he's got some nice offers, got a nice arm. Um, but like, what I are your thoughts they, on him? Well, I think they preferred, the kid that was committed to Baylor, the Austin Novosad kid, I think they really wanted him. But, yeah. you know, Ohio State is in a spot. Like, you just mentioned all those dudes. And, like, if yeah. your son now is coming out of high school, I don't know if you're sending him to Ohio State to, to, to jump into that room. But this kid, obviously, he wants to compete. Obviously, he wants to learn from Ryan Day playing that offense. So, see what happens. You know, I've seen a million guys before that weren't supposed to be anything. And they were in a room with all superstars. You know, Brian Hartline is a great example. Brian Hartline came to Ohio State and that room was unbelievable from Albert Dukes, to San Antonio Holmes, Roy Hall, all those yeah. guys. And they were like, when's this guy ever going to play? Well, he played yeah. right away, you know, and he was darn yeah. good. Yeah. And ended up a high draft pick in the NFL and lasted there forever. So, yeah. You never know, Kirk. I mean, you know, we've seen it before where kids are the lowest rated kid in the class and he ends up being an All-American. And then you see the guy that can't miss doesn't make it. So Brock Glenn may end up playing a lot of football for Ohio State or he may come for two years, learn a ton of great football from Ryan Day, and maybe transfer somewhere else. We just don't know. There's no guarantee right now that this guy is going to play behind Devin Brown. There's no guarantee that, Dom, that Dylan Riolo is going to beat this kid out. All your stars and all your rankings, they go away once you walk through the door. Yeah. So it, I like yeah, the film. It, I like Brock Glenn. You know what I mean? With, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, th I did think they wanted the other kid more, but this is a good yeah. – this is a guy can play football. He's a power five guy. He's not an Akron guy that you're taking just to fill a spot. He's a clear power five guy. 
Yeah, and you know, it reminds me a lot of like you know Justin and Troy, which has been talked about, you know, ad nauseum. Where right. you know right. Justin was the franchise that he was the Dylan Rayola. He was the class yeah. builder, uh, the guy that was calling everybody, and, you know, trying to graduate early and try to you know kind of you know lead the whole thing. And you know, he kind of got the first crack like ceremonially just because he was the early guy. You know, Troy was the late guy, the athlete. You know, they tried him as a kick returner and playing receiver right. and everything else in the world and you know the funny thing about troy is like you know i mean ohio state the very next year my year they wanted brady quinn in the class you know and they offered brady and you know he obviously goes to notre dame but right. you know, if brady comes to ohio state we might never see troy because brady was right. you know, brady's a first round pick so it's like good. you know yeah he was he was really good i mean he was you know first round pick and you know, you know i tried to figure this stuff out for 20 years and you get a lot of them right but boy you, you get fooled every year by somebody Somebody fools you that you didn't imagine. Yeah, and I, you know, I always tell people. Had, you know, nobody had Burke starting last year as a freshman cornerback. No. It was J.K. Johnson. It was Hancock. Those were the studs. No. Burke oh, yeah. was an athlete. Athlete. Maybe who, who knows where he was going to play. Or it's like San Antonio playing over Roy Hall. Like Roy Hall was a guy that was projected as yeah. the next David Boston. San Antonio was a guy that didn't get offered by any of the Florida schools. Florida, Florida yeah. State, Miami, or else he had to stay at home. But we, you know, we beat out like NC State or whoever on San Antonio, and he ends up being the first rounder. So it's like sometimes, you know, you don't realize what you have until these guys show up on campus and they start working, and then you're like, right. you know, like 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 Michael Michael Jordan started as a true freshman. Like nobody on earth predicted that. You know that that a kid that was a guard who wasn't a five star or meal American or you know, I used to have TJ junk about you know like when Connor Smith was coming, I saw the same film you did. I was at that McKinley game with Connor Smith, and they murdered Antoine Height and dumped him on his head. And I was like, TJ, I was like, you better eat your Wheaties, dude. This guy's going to take your spot. I'm going to have to be, yeah. he's going to be, he's going to be my new roommate. You're going to be living out on the streets. And you know, to TJ's credit, obviously he was a much better player than Connor and Connor never beat oh, him yeah. out, but you just, you never know. Like, I mean, if you put a gun to my head after watching that, that kid in the state title game, I'm like, he's going to start for us next year. He's going to take, he's going to start over Steve ring or TJ. And I didn't yeah. think he started over TJ, but you just, you don't know. And, and that kid showed up and he just wasn't, yeah, I mean, I, he was a very nice kid, but he got beat down so bad trying to learn how to pass block. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and a lot of these kids, their, 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 their mental is what goes. And once their mental goes, like their mental, oh, their right. spirit goes, it's over. Like then the, the body doesn't work anymore. Cause you gotta, you know, you're going to get the thing about Ohio state is you are going to get your ass kicked when you get there. It doesn't matter how good you used to be or whatever. And you have to mitigate that and fight back. Cause like I had to go against on scout team, I blocked Will Smith every day, who was first team All American, projected first round pick. I'd go out and play left tackle, and I never pass blocked in my life. So imagine me going out there against Will Smith. How bad that looked! That looked like vomit. And it was like you just got to figure it out because you know if you can figure it out and you can hang in there a little bit against Will Smith, then you know when you start the next year, it's going to be easy because you know Will's my favorite player ever because he taught me how to play tackle by killing me every day basically it's like you get killed a little bit less every day and then all of a sudden you can kind of hang in there but you know i see guys that get killed initially and they never recover and it's right. it's hard right that's why i'm always excited about every recruit because mm -hmm. there's some kids that they fall into the, the trappings of being a college kid whether it's drinking drugs going out um and they just fall out fall by the wayside and then there's other kids that keep the nose of the grindstone and they want to be great and they yeah. and they work and Look you know it. that's why louis arizari did not make it. That's all we need to say. That's one of the most talented high school players I've ever seen. That was Rob Gronkowski like <laughs> 20 years ago. E easily. Easily. He, he was. If that guy didn't make it, then anyone cannot make it. Yeah. I mean, on in Ohio Future Stars, in a year where there was Dante Whitner and Prescott and Sean Crable and even yeah. LeBron James is rated in Ohio Future Stars. Yeah, Lewis, sure. Lewis was number one sure. over LeBron James in terms of best foot, you know, high school football player in Ohio, and he was he was that good. But again, like he he lost his mind, and he was a, yeah. a four point student engineering major, and that's why, I, like I said, you yeah, never know. You, you never know, man. Well, I uh, I I appreciate it, man. Uh, this has been an awesome one. I'm gonna wrap this thing, but dude. Uh, any uh any parting words, you know, anything on the 17 and a half spread against Notre Dame? Uh, wow. What do you have coming out of the next few days uh, leading up to the Thursday bank chat? Um, what are you putting out yeah. in the next few days? Well, like I say, we're, I definitely want to have my 
I got to work on my Ohio State preview. I preview every game, every week, you know, and make a prediction. And um, then I do a review on Monday. So, like I say, we'll see. I definitely want to work on that a little bit. And um, that's a lot of points, Kirk, for, for, for that two, two ranked teams going at it. And then line 17, same with Georgia and Oregon. You're seeing the same thing. And it's crazy. So I, I definitely yeah. want to take a look at that further and do some work on that. And uh, like I said, the thing to keep an eye on here is J.J. Smith, there's talk that he's going to make an unofficial this week. So we'll see. You're trying to get that confirmed. Um, there's a chance. Chance he could be here. And That's... I know that would put a smile on Ryan Day's face. And that would <laughs> transfer over to Brian Hartline's face. And – Kevin Wilson and everybody else too. So we'll keep an eye on that. Try to get that confirmed here in in the next day or so. I know there's something in the work to see if JJ can find a way up here, do an unofficial, and um, it won't shock me if he's here. Put it that way. It's yeah. When when the guy's wearing a giant Ohio State sticker, not a little wee sticker, like a giant (laughs) on the back of his high school helmet, which again I've never seen in my life. That says yeah. that we have a good chance with that kid. <laughs> and no that's doubt. Ennis, Malachi, Fletcher. So it's it's uh, the brand is strong down there. And a lot of credit goes to Brian Hartline. I think Brian's sure. doing a fantastic sure. job. You know, he lived down there. If he calls you, like he called when he called me, it was a 757. I was like, who's 757? And I picked up the phone and I was like, Hart? I was like, you're from 330, dude. You got to rep 330. It's a 757. You don't live there no more. But uh, also, you got to mention Tony Alford in the northern part of the state handling those yeah. guys. So yeah. the, the dynamic duo down there for Ohio State, those guys are doing great work. And those coaches talk about them all the time. So they yeah. love the, they, they love Alford and Hartline. What a great a great combination for Ohio State down there. Yeah, and, and, and having two guys that are monsters down there is a huge help. Because when you're going down there, man, you're going to war with – Bama, Georgia, the U, yeah, right. LSU, Texas A&M. I mean, deep, deep waters, man. You're swimming with the, with the sharks down there. Yeah, as, as you say, that ain't that ain't that ain't Purdue and Purdue and Indiana. <laughs> no, 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 no. You need, uh, you need your best down there, and Ohio State has their best down there, in my opinion. Those guys are yeah. great. That's awesome, man. Well, as always, Bank, you're the best, my man. I appreciate you. I want to wrap this thing up. As always, we have the best recruiting guy in the game, Bill the Bank Green. He is fantastic. He does great work. Uh, nobody knows the South like Bank Green does, and he is nailing it. Uh, the South Florida Express is a – it's not officially a pipeline, but it's getting there. We have an incredible relationship with those guys. We are really excited about those guys, and uh, they have some monsters that are coming up in here. So I'm super excited about what we've got going on. Uh, jump on BuckeyeScoop.com. We are the number one Ohio State fan site. If you guys want to know what's really going on inside the Woody Hayes, that's where you need to be at. So uh, if you enjoyed this content, please give us a like, comment. Who is the next big fish we need to get in the 2023 class? We have the biggest recruiting weekend, maybe in Ohio State history coming up. Uh, Really appreciate you guys as always. Uh, Thank you for enjoying this content. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop family. You guys have a great rest of your day. Go Bucks.